Just you want to. Good evening, folks, brothers and sisters of Christ. Welcome tonight to the house of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. All right, it's always good to uh, worship God in the house of the Lord tonight. We pray for the anointed be here tonight. Uh, I'd like to uh, open up with a prayer first. Let's bow ahead. Father, we come before you, Lord, today. We thank you for so many blessings tonight. Thank you for cutting our brothers and sisters over here to celebrate and rejoice tonight. It's all about praising you, Lord, to give you all the glory. And thank you for everything you bless us for each day. We pray for, Lord, for everything you bestow about us. And we ask you, Lord, to bring prosperity and love and kindness in this serenity, in this family, this house, and, you know, anointed, Lord. We ask you to prophesy the word that about to share with everyone and let them know that Jesus is the light of the world. Heavenly Father, for all our needs and all the things we do, honor and praise you, Lord. And we humbly say this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Okay, let's uh, brace up some song first. Everybody can sing it with me along, and then I would go through the words. Amen? <coughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm going to have our hands together for everyone. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. <sighs> Tonight I was uh, supposed to attend my uh, son's uh, high school uh, meeting at 6. So when I got the call at 5 o'clock, you know what? God's work come first, right? Wherever you are, praise the Lord. Come in and it was an honor. Thank you uh, to uh, man of God. Uh, Moon, he called me up and uh, able to collaborate myself and put together something to bring us tonight. You know, we always have a food of the flesh, but the food of the spirit it carries with us every way. You know, amen, amen. How about sing a song? Uh, Amazing great, how sweet thy and Come on, sing it again. Come on, you can sing better than everybody. Amazing great worship. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you. How about Alleluia? Alleluia. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Our praise. We praise you, Lord. Alleluia. 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 together. Everybody. Now I'm going to, if you ask me, I ask you if you can do me a favor. Can I help and shake yourself, you know, fellowship a little bit before we go out in the words. Can you guys do that? Everybody say fellowship with the Lord. Amen.
Can I get an amen again? Amen? All right. Thank you. It's uh, funny. Uh, I was in the North Long Beach, I mean, South Long Beach, close to the 710. I was uh, conducting some fellowship with some friends over there, business friends. I was anointing them with the blessing of the Lord. You see, we all have our calling. And when all the brothers and sisters of Christ, they have their business, sometimes they seek the anointed of the Lord. They can do their business, but uh, they always need the Lord to make sure they're in the righteous way. I speak to you about the word on Monday, uh, about Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6. Trust the Lord for all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. It's our mind. And uh, you'll be bless us and straight out path. So anyway, amen? All right. Tonight, uh, I bless some of my brothers over there and say, it's okay. Uh, God always make his way, and I look at the traffic was on my way. And also I say, the only way I can clear this traffic, I've seen hallelujah. And I was praising, 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 and next thing you know, the floating. It was bumper to bumper, next thing you know, it started moving, moving. I say, Lord, you said in your words, Matthew 6, Matthew 7, verse 7, action shall receive. Please, Lord, declare, I want this traffic to be moving. Next thing you know, the traffic started moving, you know, because that's how we do it. It's not about us magnifying, glorifying God, you know. So, okay, amen. Uh, today, uh, we're going to be talking about the subject about believing, you know. The subject today, tonight, is believe and have faith. Um, let's look at our Bible, Matthew 9, verses 27 through 31. Okay, Matthew 9, verses 27, verse 39. Okay, you all with me? And it goes, and as Jesus passed on from there, two blind men followed him, crying aloud, Have mercy on, on us, son of David. When he entered the house, the blind man came to him, and Jesus said to them, Do you believe that I am able to do this? They said to him, Yes, Lord. Then he touched their eyes, saying, According to your faith, be it done to you. And their eyes were open. And Jesus sternly said to them, both of them, usually when Jesus blessed someone, he always warned them because there's always people noising about not believing about God's way. Even though Jesus walked on water, you know, thousand, thousand miracles, people still doubt it because that's the human nature back in the days. And it's, he even warned these two blind men, see that no one knows about it. But they went away and spread the news anyway. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters of Christ, I wish these guys was the one in the blind, going to preach about gospel, I mean, spread the word, Jesus is the, the one, you know, uh, open their eyes instead of, you know, yeah, it was Jesus. You know, it's like it was accusing the blesser. When God gave you a blessing, it's for us to enjoy it and share with our loved ones. Not for us to, you know, to make something out of the nothing. Because God is everything, you know. Like I said to you about Matthew 6, verse 33. Seek God first in the righteous way, and everything will add into it. See, every word, every parable, everything is help us to enforce, uh, empower us to do good for everything. Can I get an Amen. All right. So, and uh, we look at Psalm 27. If you look at your Bible, 13 verses 14. Psalm 27. Thirteen. Verse like I said, the word again tonight: believing. Psalm 27, 13, verse 14. I believe that I shall look upon the goodness of the Lord in the land of living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong 
and let your heart take courts. Wait for the Lord. I think the message here is loud and clear. Most of us tend to uh, go ahead of our thinking instead of wait for the Lord's call. You know, in order for us to receive the blessing, we have to get down on our knee and pray. Pray, you know, deeply in with the Lord. I believe everything you pray for, there's a reason God will give you. Sometimes we don't give up the answer we want, but you said the word, listen to the words, the goodness that he used it for. Give an example. Uh, my son, football, went last week. Uh, I was surprised. Usually he's a starting player of the game, defense. So I was working my way because God always makes me favors when I pray for it. Uh, athletic director blessed me with the VIP pass. So this way I can go anywhere I want and prophesy God's word. See, God always makes favor when you pray for things. He'll give it to you, you know, and for the goodness of it. So I was down there and watching my son when they were playing. And uh, I was wondering why he should become a second string. I didn't know they have something going on. So I said, Lord, whatever it is, because I know you bless him to be the best player it is. So at the end of the night, and we finished the game, I gathered up some parents because it was a senior night for all the parents. You know, my son is a junior. But I was there just to give comfort for all the parents and the players about to uh, leave the school. So I know we lost the game. But the Lord uh, asked my heart to gather the parents and the kids, players. So about 25, 30 of us. I said, son, it's a nice time to take the picture. How about honor God first? You know, tonight I didn't see any entry or anything. So first of all, even you lose the king, in Jesus' eyes you win. So we gather the players and parents, and we just glorify him, give him the honor and praise. Amen? That's what we do. And you know, as a brother and sister, we find the right ways, you know, whenever you can preach uh, and also to be share the gospel of Jesus Christ for anyone, you know. So after I talked to my son, my son said that before we got in the game, the coach was uh, about to, uh, you know, treat me wrong. I said, what happened, son? Well, I was coming in trying to get my, wrap up my knees and ready to do the game because we only have a few more minutes to get in the, down this field. And the coach thought I was late. Okay. And then what happened? He said he was cussing me out for no place and instead of asking me to explain. So, okay, go ahead. Cussing me with everything you've done. But I'm thankful for the Lord to guide my son because he's a big guy. And their coach is a small guy. He's a head coach. Do you see the picture? A big guy? My son said to refrain himself when the devil is knocking on his door. Go ahead and do it. But my son, no. You're not going to win this, Satan. I'm going to let him have his way. So the coach was treating him wrong, put him second string. And guess what? He's coming in a second. My son said he didn't care about whatever. I just want to see what he can do on the field. At the end of the night, the way I look at it, it's the MVP players. Because he's the only one to have a sack that night and four solo tackle. You see, when somebody treats you wrong or your kids wrong, God used his own goodness to change the thing in perspective. And everybody came and congratulated him because he's a well, humble guy. He didn't go up. Every time he do, like Troy Polamalu, if you watch Pitch Spur, he always do this. Now, when my son came, that was the first time. Can I get an amen? amen? He came out when he make a sack. He look up and tell everybody here, glorify his heavenly father. You know why? Because let the whole world, God is good. You know, knowing I didn't know what foreseen was going to take place. But God made that event become good. And I thank my son for being there because I pray with him. You know, besides six boys used to on my house, they're my nephew, but I always call them son. Because you know what? You gotta treat them the same. That's the way. Can I get an amen? amen? That's what we do. You know, you don't favor your son. You favor everybody. Because God said, Take care of my children. Right? And when you say you promise to take care of them, you gotta walk the talk. I was so more lenient to my son, uh, I mean my nephew, six of them, instead of my son. But knowing he was the one who bring everyone inside that they need help, either that or they're going to be in the street or be on the gang members. I said, bring it. Bring it on my house. You know? And in my house is a lot of police knows me. You know? Because they, you know, when you do good, God is blessed you for do good. And guess what? The ha my house is the house of the Lord. You're talking about people comes in left and right. 
I feed them the same. You know, I say the word is love thy neighbor and love everybody. So I'm from these six boys. Everyone graduate. That's all I said. When you graduate from high school, you move on. But you know, when the Lord bless you, your son, I was not putting, he had carried his own weight. It's not the smart kid, but at the end of the year, four years, he was the only one from the six boys have a scholarship full right to go anywhere he wants. I want me to go to ESC, but he wants to go far. Dad, let me learn. You teach me well, you know, let me go out there. It's nice and quiet, the country in Idaho, and be able to do my thing, you know. I say, maybe that's what the Lord's blessing. So what I'm saying, God is good. Help him a lot. And uh, the word is, you know, every day I pray with him and fellowship with everyone. Yeah. So, thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Uh, amen. amen. So I want to share. That's why I want to share because every event I go places, I always bring it in the house of the Lord to know the goodness of God is always in us and want us to be able to do everything we can, you know, maximize your ability or talents because each one of us have a unique talent. Sometimes we're surprised, oh, I did this. We all have that inner part of us. Okay. So let's look at uh, Exodus 15, verses 13. Exodus 15, verses 13. There we go. Cut your scripture. Okay. You have led us to steady fast love, the people whom you have redeemed. You have a kite you have guided them by your strength to your holy hands. Folks, loud and clear again. Believing Jesus is the only way I do. And one ask for all this house, brothers and sisters of Christ. Every day is a challenge for us, but it's glory for God. You know, can I get an amen? amen? That's what we do. You know, no matter what, small or big, poor or rich, we all got students. So I want to challenge you, and every day, wherever you go in your life, spend some time with the Lord. It's the only way. See this cross right here? I carry his cross every day where I go. I might have a security uh, background in law enforcement, but... Maybe that's what God blessed me with that position, so I can be a calling angel one day. You know, we all have our calling. Believe me, God loves each one of you, and let's embrace him. Day and night, I tend to make a commitment with the Lord to text everyone in the morning and night to the word of the Lord. Because every day, we have a quote. And if what happens when you text somebody, they always have a good, different response. They say, thank you so much, this is what I need at night. Most of those who respond, I have is positive. And we have to surround ourselves with positive people. Because God is positive. Every negative thing is out there. You know where it is. Okay, so um, let's just praise the Lord. Keep in your heart. And I thank you for coming tonight. Okay? Amen. That's it. Um, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Okay. Let's uh, stand together. Amen. And we're going to sing uh, that song that we sing quite often. All right. This is the, the day, day, this is, is the day, day when the Lord has made, and the Lord has made, and I will rejoice, I will rejoice, I will rejoice in the glad in it, and to glad in it. This, this is, is the day when the Lord has made, I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day when the Lord has me. All right, brother, thank, thank you, you so thank much. You very much. God bless you. Y'all may be seated. And uh, we're going to do our call to fall, which is what we do, uh, because our friends in Washington, D.C., at the Family Research Council, and they have a motto, faith family and freedom and uh, uh, they have uh, written a prayer for us that is based on the scripture and of course that's the only way I would consider it if it's based on the Bible 
And, uh, but that prayer is called Call to Fall. And if you want to go on web, go on the site, look at it. It's C-A-L-L and the number 2 and then F-A-L-L. -L. And there's over 2 million people that have signed up. Uh, for that call to fall, to say, I will participate in that. I'm one of those two million plus, and you can be as well. They don't send you uh, requests for gifts. They don't bug you. Uh, they just tell you what to pray for and how to pray, and they ask you to pray. That's all. They don't ask you for money or anything like that. And uh, that organization works in Washington, D.C., literally seven days a week. They work primarily Monday through Friday, but they also have other events on Saturdays and Sundays as well. And uh, Tony Perkins is the head of it. And the reason I say that is I want you to pray for him. Remember Tony Perkins. And then one of my dear friends is their chaplain. And his name is Pierre Bynum. So pray for Pierre. Now, if you would, join me on your knees, please. Join me on your knees. One knee or two, but... Join me on your knees, and then repeat after me this prayer that they have written for us, but I believe it's of the Lord. And it says, I will answer. Come on, y'all can do better than that. I will answer. God's call to fall. On my knees. In humility. And seek his face. In repentance, in repentance, so that he, so that he might forgive, might forgive my, sin my sin and heal our land. Heal our land. In, Jesus in Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right, thank you. You may return to your seats. And uh, this has been a busy, busy day today. And I know uh, Mark and Brendan and some other. Who else went to the, with you over there? Yeah, oh, you, Brendan and Frankie. All right. They're over in the kitchen right now, I think, trying to put the kitchen back together. Uh, we had been invaded by creatures, and uh, uh, we had another army invade them today and wipe them out, and we praise God for that. And uh, they're over trying to put the kitchen back together, and so you pray with them and pray for them. They had a busy day, a lot of traffic, and just really a bad day uh, at uh, bad day at Round Rock or whatever you want. But it was a bad day for traffic and a lot of other things. But again, this is the day the Lord has made. Amen. And we will rejoice and be glad in it, even with difficult times. And uh, we do have the uh, uh, annual uh, prayer breakfast tomorrow morning. And if you've already given me your name, uh, we have a ticket for you. Uh, but if you haven't, I'm sorry, they don't have any more tickets. <laughs> I tried to get some more, but they didn't have any more. So if you gave me your name, I have a list, and those are the ones that will get the tickets. Uh, but we don't have any more tickets. Uh, sort of good news, bad news. Bad news, no more tickets. Good news is it's sold out. There will be over 500 people there at the hotel, uh, Buena Park Hotel, tomorrow morning at 7 o'clock. And we'll be there to fellowship and to praise the Lord and to stand for Jesus Christ. And uh, we praise the Lord for that. Now. I wonder if there are other prayer requests or praise reports some of you might like to share tonight. Continue to pray for our kitchen crew and our work crew here. And let me just also ask you to pray for your cooperation. Cooperate with them. Help them where you can, when you can. I know some of you do, but some of you don't. So everybody, pitch in, all right? If everybody pitches in, then everybody just has to do a little bit. So please cooperate. Now, any other prayer requests or praise reports anybody have? Anybody? Our uh, Korean brother shared with us that we were going to be on the 17th having a handbell choir here, uh, and uh, but they'll not be here on the 17th because the sister that leads that has a friend in Korea that has cancer, and so she has to make a trip to Korea. So pray for that family and pray for those as she travels and so forth. Now, the third, though, on the 3rd of December, we will have a singing group here, right? How many people will that be? Three. 
people. So on the uh, Wednesday night, uh, December the 3rd, uh, we will have uh, some people here to sing for us and with us. And so uh, we want you to remember that and uh, uh, be available for that as well. One of the things that, uh, as all of you know, is, is that we traditionally have a Wednesday night service at 7, and then the other group uh, started coming in not too long ago at 6. So we have back-to-back -back services from 6 to 7 and then 7 to 8. And uh, uh, we encourage you to be a part of those. We encourage you to share. Uh, encourage you to share your praise reports, your prayer requests, whatever you'd like to share. And one of the things that we do on Wednesday nights at our time is Brother Ronnie has uh, been working with us and helping us. So, Dr. Ronnie, would you come and lead us in a uh, song or two, please? Amen. How's everybody doing tonight? Praise, praising the Lord. Amen. Let's begin with first things first. 478, Jesus said, Seek ye first. What? Thank you very much. 478, Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Two verses. We'll sing it through a couple of times so we can let it resonate within our hearts and keep us focused on the primary mission, keeping Jesus first in our lives. Seek ye first the kingdom. 478. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Allelu, alleluia. Ask and it shall be given unto you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. Allelu, alleluia. Now, how many of you have sung that just now for the first time? Let's see your hands. Well, okay, amen. Well, most of you know it now, so you know it. So sing it out and lift up the name of the Lord. And, and be, let's remind ourselves and focus on the Lord Jesus. Seek ye first the kingdom. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Allelu, alleluia. Ask and it shall be given unto you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. Allelu, alleluia. Amen. Now, Thanksgiving is coming in a few days, and then what's coming? Christmas. And we're going to be singing more and more about the coming of Jesus and uh, that wonderful promise in Isaiah 9 6. Uh, here it is right now, 203. His name is wonderful. We get a chance to sing about it now and lift up his name. Think about all those names of Jesus in the Bible. What a wonderful thing. If you haven't ever studied the names of Jesus in the Bible, study them. That'll bless your heart. 203, His name is wonderful. Sing it with me. His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. Jesus, my Lord. He is the mighty King, Master of everything. His name is wonderful, Jesus my Lord. He's the great, He's the great Shepherd, the rock of all ages, Almighty God. Is he bow down before him, love and adore him? His name is wonderful, Jesus my Lord. Once again, his name is wonderful, his name is wonderful. His name is wonderful, 
Jesus, my Lord. He is the mighty King, Master of everything. His name is wonderful, Jesus, my Lord. He's the great shepherd. He's the great shepherd, the rock of all ages. Almighty God is he. Bow down before him, love and adore him. His name is wonderful, Jesus my Lord. Amen. All right, Brother Amen. Ronnie's going to... Brother Ronnie's going to get another song ready for us. In just a few moments, we'll sing another one. But before we do, I want to talk just a little bit about that name of Jesus. It is a wonderful name, Jesus, and we just sang about that. But the other thing that's important about what the Bible teaches about that name, it talks about not only his name is wonderful, and his name is to be praised, Jesus, my Lord. And we know that the word Lord just means boss, who's in charge. And the Bible says Jesus is to be in charge. I hope you'll let him be in charge of your life. For I know what happens when I'm in charge. <laughs> I don't do very well, okay? And uh, I have a strange feeling maybe the same thing is true with you. But what I want to talk to you about just for a couple of minutes before we sing another song, and that is the name of Jesus. We have a song where we talk about there's power in the blood and there's power in the name of Jesus. But one of the great things about the name of Jesus, we all have various circumstances in our life. Some of you are homeless. Some of you live here at the shelter. Some of you are not. But we all have all kinds of circumstances. Some of you are fighting a battle uh, of smoking and drinking and doping and discouragement and, and, and uh, diet. And I could go on and on and on. We have all of these things. My brother Will just went and we praised God for our answered prayer. He had to go for a colonoscopy. Not the most fun thing in the world, but uh, he got a good report and we praised God for that. Thank you all for praying for him. Uh, but he had to go through that, you know. And, and uh, uh, But all that we go through, I've shared recently again, uh, just the 23rd of October, just one month ago, uh, was the fourth year that my wife has been gone. I don't like that. Uh, I spent 48 years, one month and 14 days with that beautiful woman and and then the Lord saw fit to take her home. I didn't like that then, don't like it now. But God, God can help us through all of our circumstances. And the way he does it is a very unique way. And the very unique way, whether it's dealing with smoking or drinking or doping or depression or loss of a loved one or sickness or illness, the way we deal with it is the name of Jesus. And the Bible says there's power in that name. There's power over sin. There's power over discouragement. There's power. There's power over all that we have in life. And the wonderful thing about God's holy word, and I don't do this to impress people with my knowledge of the Bible, but the Bible does teach us a lot of things as we research and find out more and more about God's Word. It is such a rich, rich, uh, deep well of, of love and help. And one of the things that we find out is, is that the original Bible, the original Greek, uh, the original New Testament was written in Greek and in Hebrew. Now, most of us know very little Greek or very little Hebrew, but nonetheless... I believe it's important for you all to know that as you deal with your circumstances, whether it was Mark today in traffic or, or me with my circumstance or you with yours, 
when we deal with these circumstances, there is a power that we have available to us. And the way that power is available to us is through the name of Jesus. Not just through Jesus, that's true, but through the name of Jesus. And whether it's my loneliness or your habits or your discouragement or traffic or whatever it is, the best way to deal with those things is that magic, and I'll say it, very magic, powerful word, Jesus. Jesus. And the Bible says God, the Father, gave us Jesus. But he also says in the original language that he gave us the power, the power to overcome sin, to overcome discouragement. And power is in that name of Jesus. And the word power there in the original language, you know what it was? It was a Greek word. And uh, the Greek word is dunamis. Dunamis. Now, that may not ring a bell with most of us, but the word dunamis in the Greek was later translated into English. And the English word for dunamis Guess what it was? Dynamite. Dynamite. You y'all remember that young black fellow that was on TV and he was dynamite, you know? And, and that was a fun thing and a funny thing, but dynamite to him was being happy in life and, and, and so forth. And that's a part of dynamite. Uh, but another part of dynamite, if you drive up here in the hills, as you drive through the hills, you will see straight lines going down the side of the mountain that looked like they'd been carved in there. And they have. Because, see, when they went in there to put the road through the mountain, it was solid rock. So they go up there and they drill holes down in the rock and put dynamite in there. And then they explode the dynamite and that blows all of the rock into little pieces, and then they haul it out, and now the road can be put through there. Well, if you drive through there now, you'll see the half of the holes that when they drill those holes, the other half is left there because they make it blow one direction. Those dynamite experts know how to make If they just put it in there and blew it up, they'd have a big mess. But they put the holes in there at the right angle, in the right place, and then they light it, and they blow it up, and it blows the middle up, but leaves the sides. That's why when you drive through there, you see those lines going down. Those aren't lines. Those are dynamite holes. Those are holes that were drilled there years ago when they blew it up. And so dynamite can be used to destroy but it can also be used to create. Yes, it destroyed the mountain in the sense that it blew it up, but it blew it in small pieces so they could haul it away and make a road through there. You see, sometimes when we have the name of Jesus in our life, it sort of blows us up. <laughs> we don't like it. But in the long run, it helps us, okay? So remember... Whatever you're dealing with, let your mouth and your mind. And you don't have to do it out loud, but I like to just say it out loud sometimes. At my lowest point, when I'm discouraged, at my lowest point, when I'm lonely, at my lowest point, you know, some mornings I get up and, man, I'm going like crazy and I got a good day. Other days, you know, I said to people, sometimes in the morning I get up and say, Good morning, Lord! Other mornings I get up and say, good Lord, is it morning <laughs> again? You know, so we have different days. But one of the things I try to do is I try to use the name Jesus. Amen. When I'm at my greatest discouragement, when I'm at my greatest time, 
I try to use the name Jesus. And we had a great day today. A lot of good things happened as well. And in fact, the matter is, I don't know how many of y'all remember, but there was a man on the radio here many years ago named Walter Martin. And he was known as the Bible man. And a great, intelligent, mighty man of God. And he used to come on and explain the Bible on the radio. Walter Martin was his name. He also wrote a book called The Kingdom of the Cults. That is, those people who led others astray. But Walter Martin was a great, mighty man of God and a great tool in my life as a young preacher. I used to work in Compton and go to school up here at Biola. And I'd drive, that's before they had a freeway out here, and, and I'd drive all the way out to Biola listening to the radio and quite often I would listen. He would say, good morning, folks. This is Walter Martin. And he would teach the Word of God. And I would be in school even before I got to school with Walter Martin. Well, time goes on. I got a text today, or actually a, a, a Facebook message, uh, from a lady by the name of Cindy Walter Martin. And she let me know that she had listened to my program and that she was praying for our dear friend in Iran, Saeed Abedinei, and that she was praying for him and that they had written a song and wanted to know if we would play it. And I said, absolutely, yes. And then she told me who she was. She said, my name is Cindy. But she said, my father was Walter Martin. And I said, well, praise the Lord. I knew your dad knew and loved your dad, wasn't personal friends with him, but I sure did know him well because I heard him every day preach. And that just goes to show you how God, here Walter Martin's been dead. In fact, she even said, she said, he's been gone for a long time. I don't know how many years ago Walter passed away, but it's quite some time ago. And, uh, but he's still affecting my life, still affecting his daughter's life. And the uh, Bible Answer Man programs are still available. And he's in heaven, going on home to be with the Lord. But that's how God uses us and, and, and all of us. And uh, here this dear lady sent me. She said, uh, will you play the song? And I said, yes. And So we are indeed continuing to pray for Saeed Abedini, who is the man that went to uh, Iran and opened up an orphanage. And his only crime was love. He loved children, but he was a Christian. And they said, if you'll deny Christ, we'll let you go home. If you don't deny Christ, we're going to put you in jail. So he's been in jail now over two years. And so you need to pray for Saeed. S-A-E-E-D. Saeed. And pray for him. And uh, pray for... Walter Martin's daughter, as she works together and prays together and has written some music for the family and is ministering to that family. So that's how God, that's how powerful the word Jesus is and can be in your life. So I want us to, I want Brother Ronnie to come and lead us in another song now, if he would. So what do you say? Do you love that name? Yeah. You love the Lord Jesus. Here's your chance to sing to him, 212, to tell him you love him. 212, I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice. So I hope you'll lift your voice now to him and get, tell him how much you love him. 212. Say it to Jesus. Say it to Jesus. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship you. Oh, my soul, rejoice. Take joy, my King, in what you hear. May it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. I think I pitched it a little bit low. You want to give us the chord on that so we can sing it again? Maybe it'll pitch a little low. Give us the chord, please. Give me the chord. I love you, Lord, 
and I lift my voice to worship you, O my soul, rejoice. Take joy, my King, in what you hear. May it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. Pastor, I have another song if you must sing right, it now. Yeah, if you would, sing one more song okay. for us, and then 20, we'll 23. Uh, go. Uh, God is so good. God is good. All the time. Sing it with me. God is so good. God is so good. Then we'll sing the other stanzas. God is so good. Hallelujah. God is so good. Hallelujah. God is so good. He's so good to me. He cares for me. He cares for me, hallelujah. He cares for me, hallelujah. He cares for me. He's so good to me. God answers prayer. God answers prayer, hallelujah. God answers prayer, hallelujah. God answers prayer. He's so good to me. Jesus is real. Jesus is real. Hallelujah. Jesus is real. Hallelujah. Jesus is real. He's so good to me. He's coming soon. He's coming soon. Hallelujah, He's coming soon. Hallelujah, He's coming soon. He's so good to me. I praise His name. I praise His name. Hallelujah, I praise His name. Hallelujah, I praise His name. He's so good to me. I love him so. I love him so. Hallelujah. I love him so. Hallelujah. I love him so. He's so good to me. God is so good. God is so good. Hallelujah. God is so good. Hallelujah, God is so good, He's so good to me. One more time, give it your best. God is so good, hallelujah, God is so good, hallelujah, God is so good, He's so good to me. And all God's people said, Amen. Pastor. Thank you, Dr. Ronnie. God bless you. Thank you for helping us with that worship time. And I want to share with you a little bit about how good God is. God is so good. As most of you know, we struggle to sort of make ends meet here as far as food and everything. And Brenda was sharing with me the need, and we were talking and praying about that. And I got a call today. Well, I actually got a call yesterday from this lady. And uh, she said, is this Pastor Drake? And I said, yeah. She said, I sure do like what y'all do there at that church. I really appreciate what you're doing to help people there. And I said, well, thank you, my sister, and thank you for saying that, but give God all the glory. Give God the praise. Amen. She said, oh, I know, and I knew you were going to say that, she said. <laughs> and uh, I said, well, give God the praise. Amen. And, and I said, if you don't mind me asking, what's your name? And she said, my name's Barbara. And I said, well, I'll remember that name. She said, why? I said, well, because my wife's name was Barbara. And I said, so I'll remember your name. A lot of other names I'll forget. And for all of those of you who I forget your name, please forgive me. Um, I, I'm, you know, I forget. <laughs> but I didn't forget her name. 
And I didn't get, forget her name for two reasons. Number one, because that was my wife's name. And that reminded me of a great blessing, how many blessings I'd had from my Barbara. And another thing, though, that reminds me of her name, Barbara, is because the lady said, you know, Pastor, I was at the store. And she said, I'm, I'm, I'm old and it's hard for me to get around. She said, but uh, I do get to the store. I still can do my own shopping. And I said, well, praise God. And she said, I was in the store today, and I was buying our turkey for Thanksgiving. And they said, if you buy that turkey today, we'll give you a free one. Buy one, get one free. And she said, my first thought was, just me and my husband, what do we need two turkeys for? And she said, then I thought about the church. She said, will you let me drop a turkey off there? I said, I'm going to let you drop it off. If you tell me where you live, I'll come get it. <laughs> oh, no, she said, I don't, you don't need to do that. That was yesterday. You don't need to do that. She said, I've got to come up there close to the church uh, on Wednesday anyway. And she said, if you'll let, if I, I can let you know when I'm going to get there, I'll drop it off. And so today, Will came to me and said, some lady named Barbara out here wants to see the preacher. And so I said, okay, I know who that is. I went out there and I said, hi, Barbara. She said, you did remember my name. So we had a fellowship together and she pointed over to the right and there was a big old butterball turkey. And she said, I hope y'all can use it. I said, I guarantee you we'll use it. Amen. And so uh, that just shows you how God works with people, through people, and all around us and with us and through us. And so God uh, gives us all that opportunity uh, because we're his children. And one of the things I'd want to do before we leave here tonight is to make sure that you are a child of God. The fact that you're in a church doesn't make you a child of God any more than when I was in my garage this morning that made me a car. You know? Being in church don't make you a Christian. Being in church can be fun, or it can be boring, or it can be all kinds of things. But the most important thing is the way you become a Christian is not coming to church, even though church is good. The way you become a Christian is three steps. Number one, you acknowledge that Jesus Christ is God. Not Allah, not Buddha, not something else, but you acknowledge that Jesus Christ is God. And then you acknowledge that there's nothing you can do or I can do to earn our way to heaven. And we need to know both of those things. But if we know both of those things and still do not make a decision to invite him to come into our heart, into our life, then we're still lost without Christ. So I'd like to ask you to bow your heads with me for a moment. Every head bowed, every eye closed. And if you'd like to pray that prayer tonight to acknowledge Jesus, to acknowledge you can't save yourself, and to invite him, to come into your heart and into your life. Would you just raise your hand and put it right back down? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. If you raised your hand, here's what I want you to do. I want you to pray this prayer. Very simply, Jesus, I know you're God. And Jesus, I know I can't get to heaven on my own. But I ask you right now, come into my heart into my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And if you came, if you prayed that prayer tonight, the Bible says the angels had a party in heaven. They rejoice every time one person comes to know the Lord. And we praise God for that. Now, we're going to move into a portion of our service right now where I'm going to ask our ushers to come forward. And we're going to give you a chance to give to the ministry to give to the light bill, the gas bill, the water bill, uh, the debugging bill, <laughs> uh, everything that we have to spend money for, we're going to ask you to give. That's how we get our money. We don't get money from anybody else except God's people. So 
as the offering plates come around, you give what God tells you to give. Not one penny more, not one penny less. But you give what God tells you to give. And if you're not able to give, don't feel bad. God knows. God knows your circumstances. And if you have a lot of money and you only give a little bit, God knows that too. <laughs> but the point is, if, if God, if you've got money and you can give, God will bless you for it. And uh, we'll be good stewards. I promise you, uh, we, we get the most for the money. We do everything we can to, to make the money go as far as we possibly can. So as they pass the offering plates and you give. By the way, I want to remind you, we do have one other little project that we do outside the church. Some friends of ours down in Branson, Missouri, are building a big cross. And they're going to put it up on a hill overlooking Branson where about 10 million people come through there every year. And they're going to see this beautiful cross standing there on the mountain. People will be able to ride an elevator to the 17th floor in the cross. And uh, they said when they decided to do that, when God called them to do it, they didn't want to have to charge to come for the attraction. They wanted to be able to do it free. And so that's why they've said, we're going to build it over time, and we're going to let people, homeless people, preachers, everybody, uh, pitch in and build the cross. And so that's what this blue box is. So if you've got an extra quarter or dime or nickel or whatever, you want to put that in there. Whatever goes in that box every month, we send to them down in Branson, and that's helping to build that beautiful cross. So you do that as you leave tonight. And I want to ask you, if you would, please, to stand. We're going to ask God's blessing on this offering that we've taken, and we're going to ask God's blessing on the offering for the cross as well. So would you bow your heads with me and dedicate your offering, your giving, and all of our giving. Father, we dedicate this time tonight to you and for you, and we ask, Lord, that you'd help us to get the big bang for our buck whatever we have to purchase whatever we have to pay for we pay that you, we pray that you'd make it go a long way for your kingdom's work bless each man and each woman here tonight and the family that they represent many of us have families scattered all over the country lord but we know they're in your hands even if they're scattered we know that they're in your hands. And so we dedicate this offering and we dedicate the men and women in this church tonight to serve you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Can I get an amen? amen. Thanks for our, our senior pastor here. Uh, make sure to keep him in prayer because. He's the father here for us to kind of guide us to the right place. He was mentioned about leaders. He's the person for most of the leader here. So when you all you go home, you keep him in prayer, okay? Yes. And uh, so that will come. Now, I have an announcement. This is uh, 